Hi guys, I'm down at my local riverbank today and um, I'm going to photograph fairly common species. I'm looking to photograph mute swans, black-headed gulls and I've seen a, a few turnstones as well. Now mute swans, obviously they're, they're a really common bird along with the black-headed gulls. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we've got great conditions. Um, it's snowed and it doesn't really snow that often in my part of the world. So my plan is both the mute swans and the black-headed gulls are more or less white all over. With, you know, with the uh, sort of uh, the mute swans have got the orange and black beaks, black-headed gulls the same really. So I'm going for a high key sort of shot, a real sort of minimalist wildlife image. So what I'm going to do is overexpose the picture slightly so that all the white tones just overexpose and blow out a little bit, which will give me these lovely mute swans with their sort of white plumage against a white background. And I'm going to make sure I've just got snow in the background. So I might have to shoot a little bit higher than I normally would uh, to get that sort of white background because I don't want any of the river. I just want a really simple, plain background with a slightly overexposed swan and an overexposed background. Um, I'm shooting with my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom lens because the swans are obviously big birds and the black headed gulls are a lot smaller. So I want to be able to zoom in and out to change my framing rather than move around and, and maybe scare the birds off. Um, and uh, it's very dull, flat lighting conditions. It's cloudy, but that's fine because what I want is that soft light so there's no light or shade in the background. I just want it to be flat and one tone so I get this white background without any, um, without any sort of shadows, uh, shadows or anything else getting in the way. So the, the fact that we've got flat cloudy lighting is actually good for this sort of photography. And then aside from that, I'm on a combination of either 400 or 800 between the two ISO. I'm on a thousandth of a second and f5.6, so it's all looking good. Um, now finding the subject shouldn't be too hard because you know the swans are always here along with the black-headed gulls and as I say I've already seen turnstones so that's all good. So now it's just a case of just waiting for the right composition uh, with the right background rather than waiting for the wildlife to come in. I've got the wildlife, I just need to get the right composition. So um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon guys. In this headshot of a mute swan, I've only overexposed it slightly because I still wanted to keep uh, plenty of detail in the uh, the neck and the head, you know, the feathers of the mute swan. So it's probably about um, between half a stop and one stop of light overexposed. Uh, and I think that gives us a really nice clean background. It's almost like a studio background. And on the next picture, we've got the same thing. Um, and then on the last one, um, I think it's quite an unusual composition. But again, that high key, uh, slightly high key effect works really well. On the uh, next pictures coming up of black headed gull, um, I've gone for a slightly more aggressive uh, high key overexposed image. And uh, I think that also works well in these cases. The next two pictures of this black headed gull are also um, high key. So they've been overexposed on purpose. And if you look at the background, there's virtually no texture in the snow. And that's exactly the look I was going for. Um, the fact that the gull is mainly white and very light gray tones, it works really well with a, a sort of a, a really soft uh, background that's got no detail in. So again, not massively overexposed here, but a small amount of overexposure uh, takes out some of the detail in the background in particular and it's leaving enough detail in the main subject to still uh, produce a nice picture and a, a really good likeness for that bird. So again, a little bit of overexposure I think works really well for this image. Hi guys, I've already got some nice shots in the bag. I've got some uh, head shots of the swans because I don't just want the full, uh, full length. I've come in tight so I've just got the head and the neck of the swan against the white background and that looks really nice. I've got full length shots of the swans. I've got black headed gulls which look really great against this white background and also got a few turnstones so it's been really good. It's absolutely freezing. I forgot my gloves which is really annoying. It's about minus two, the wind is howling through, we've got little snow showers, but these conditions are fantastic. So as I say, I've got this, these fairly ordinary birds, but it just goes to show that if you shoot a, a common subject, but in the right weather conditions or the right lighting conditions, you can come up with some really nice shots. And uh, I'm really pleased with what I've got, even though, as I say, you know, uh, we've got common uh, uh, mute swans and like the gulls, they're really common and they're, you'll see them across the whole of the country. But because I've got the right, weather conditions it's you know it's really good photography so i'm having a cracking morning even though it is a bit nippy i have to say um there's a load of waders just flowing in over that side so i'm going to keep an eye on those guys as well uh, we've got a few herring gulls haven't photographed them yet because they haven't come up onto the snow because i don't want to photograph 
anything actually in the water. I want to get the snow and this lovely sort of plain white background. Um, yes, so um, I'm going to put best pictures on the end of this video. Um, it's, uh, as I say, freezing cold and windy, but um, well worth getting out. And uh, I would sort of say, it's, you know, in these sort of conditions, you can get some really great shots. So the fact that the weather is not great is, is a bonus for this type of photography. So yeah, uh, thanks very much for watching guys, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have enjoyed it, if you can give it a thumbs up, that would be great, always helps my channel, a like, and uh, if you've got any comments about winter wildlife photography, if you can put them uh, in the comment section below, that would be really nice, and uh, yeah, last but not least, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, and you've enjoyed this video, if you consider if you can uh, consider subscribing that would be brilliant you know it's been a cracking morning uh, i'm going to do a little bit more photography until the uh, the weather sort of pushes me indoors um but yeah it's all good i've really really enjoyed myself and uh, it's uh, yeah w winter minimalist wildlife photography i think if you get the right conditions you can't beat it but we've really got a bit of a storm coming in now and it's getting very snowy and very sleety so uh, from a very cold uh, winter uh, wonderland of Essex. I will speak to you soon guys. All the pictures so far uh, I took really great care to make sure all I had in the background was snow because I wanted that real minimalist uh, high key feel to the pictures. But then when this snowstorm came in it was absolutely fantastic conditions and I really wanted to get uh, a couple of images that, sh that showed the swans in the snow you know in the middle of this sort of hostile environment almost. And in order to do that I switched my composition and had some of the river in the background because those snowstorms or those snowflakes show up much better against that grey background than they would just a white snowy background so I think you have to adapt your uh, compositions and what you're trying to achieve depending on the weather conditions and I think this is a, a really good example of having to just react to the conditions and uh, change the the composition and uh, the way the pitch is constructed and I did the same for the flight shot of this black-headed gull here I wanted to show the black-headed gull in it wasn't uh, so heavy the snow uh, when this uh, gull was flying around but I wanted to show this uh, the snow again coming down and if I'd have shot this against a white sky um, again that snow wouldn't have showed up too much so I think for these four pictures having some dark tones in the background is uh, really important to show you know the environment and the weather conditions at the time We've got a couple of pictures of a turnstone coming up now and uh, in this first one I've gone for a more aggressive high key look so in other words I've ex overexposed the picture a lot more on the first one than on the second one and you can see the background's completely blown out uh, the foreground's blown out there's no detail uh, in in the snow at all and the turnstone almost looks like a pencil drawing because it's it's overexposed and that's what I wanted for this uh, the effect of this shot but if you look at the second picture it's not uh, it's anywhere near as high key and it gives you a different feel to the shot. Um, I actually think I prefer the first shot but obviously you can make your own minds up guys. Again in these next two pictures uh, I've got the river in the background because the snowstorm came in again and I really wanted to show these turnstones sort of just huddled against the wind with the snow coming in and if I'd have kept the, the white background then that snow wouldn't have showed up so it's really important sometimes to have that different uh, tonal range so that the light tones of the snow sharp against the grey tones uh, of that background.